Hi everyone! Today I'm sharing a scene card using Not Too Shabby's Happy Halloween stamp set just in time for Halloween. And for this card, I'm focusing on the two witch images. One will be in the sky behind, or actually in front of a moon, and one will be below holding a broomstick. And I masked these all off because I will be using distress scenes to quickly help me color up the background. So I wanted to add a moon, so I used a die cut for um, the moon, just in a circle. And for the hillside, I cut out two pieces um, that will form the hillside, and I'll be coloring everything with distressings. I'm using three colors to give it a bit of dimension, a little darker at the bottom, um, just so it has that dimension, and also because, you know, it's nighttime, so it should be dark and not like bright green. And I know that my coloring isn't perfect with the nighttime feel, but I think it turns out pretty good. And it is a quick way just to color up the background. So I wanted to add a second hilled side. So I masked off the bottom portion and then I'm masking off another top portion. Uh, keep in mind that when distress inks are wet still, it's harder for the masking paper to stick. And I actually had a bit of issue with covering up the hillside to do the rest of the sky. And what I did was use a piece of washi tape just to tape everything down to make sure it doesn't curl up so I can have crisp lines. I also taped on the back too, just so I can uh, make sure it sticks. I'm also using a piece of paper to protect my fingers because I have a tendency to put my fingers right into the ink and it kind of messes up the blending. So all the colors that I'm using for the background will be listed down below for your reference in case you're interested. I wanted to go with a little purple and blue in the sky. I kept the blues a little bit lighter around the moon just because the moon would be shining and it would make the sky appear lighter in that area and as it moves out it gets a little darker. So I also uh, mixed a little bit of Perfect Pearl with water and flicked it around the background for little stars. And I will also be using some a white paint and flicking that all around the background as well because the white really pops and the perfect pearl just kind of shimmers. So it looks really cool. So once I'm done with that, I'm removing all the mask and that's, I think, the fun part. But then I do realize that I want to give the moon a little bit of dimension. So I put on the witch mask again and use the outside of the circle just to color it up really quickly, just to give it a little bit of a glow using, I believe it was antique linen and it just is the perfect color for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and color up these images with Copic markers. And again, I'll have all my markers that I'm using for the coloring listed down below. So for these two little witches, I actually want to add a little light effect on them. So because the moon is right behind the witch, she's going to kind of be glowing. So in order to do that, I kind of outlined the image with a bit of a yellow Copic marker. And so that highlights every area of the witches where I want the light to hit. So when I color it in, I'll just leave that yellow until my very last color where I will go over the yellow and usually it's a very light color so you can still see the yellow peeking through and that really gives the effect for the light bouncing off of the witches. So for the witch on the broomstick, it'll be around her um, and so everything colored centered would be normal colors, no yellow light or anything. It's just around the rim of her hat, on the back of her um, bum, and the broom. And for the witch at the very bottom, uh, it will only be on her right side where um, the moon is shining up against her. So I think that this really adds to the effect of the overall look. And I'm still working on my Copic skills. So I've been watching a lot of tutorials and seeing different techniques. And of course, everything's artistic. So you can do as you want. Um, and I'm sure that no one would really point out like, hey, your light isn't shining in the correct area. So I think that you can go ahead and color however you feel most comfortable. And this is just 
something that I've picked up along the way is to add that yellow first so I know not to color on it. Uh, once you add darker colors like the gray that I'm using for this particular witch, it kind of it makes it harder for the yellow to peer through. So I always start by accenting exactly where I want all the highlights to be. I'll go ahead and color and then I'll go over the yellow highlights lightly with the lightest color that I'm using. And in this, um, for this switch, I believe it's a C5. And if it kind of loses the highlights there, I'll go back in with the yellow marker just to add the highlights. And that really works because it will pick up the color and it will show through. So I do go back a few times because I realized that the, the dark grays were a little too dark and the yellow just didn't appear. But I really like how that witch on the broomstick turned out because it does look like she's glowing and the moonlight is bouncing right off of her. So I think that that turned out well. Now, of course, you'll see I go back multiple times because I'm just not happy with the yellow. And it's always a learning experience with the coloring, but I think that eventually I'll get it down. And I'm sure that a lot of people out there don't aren't as familiar with using Copics. I'm still learning. I think I've been using them for maybe two years, and I learn something new with every video I watch. And so I think that just paying attention to those little details really changed the look of the overall card. Um, I've never really colored cards using light sources or thinking about light bouncing off of particular images. But in this case, I think it really works. And I think that it really shows with this witch on the bottom left-hand corner with the yellow that appears. It's just, it's a little bit more obvious because she's wearing purple and the yellow really, really pops out and I really like it. But originally I wanted to do that silhouette thing and I think that I'm glad I stuck with the choice of coloring both of them because they're so adorable and I believe that this set is part of a holiday bundle that is still available on the website and I think that it's super cute. I used it um, one of the other sets for a previous card and it was for fall and I think I'm going to pull that out again to create another card because I want to use uh, the witch in this set and the scarecrow in the other set. I believe it's called Happy Fall. And I think that it's uh, perfect for another scene card. Lately, I've been really into doing scene cards and I think that they're just so fun. So I uh, finished up coloring the images and I want to add the sentiment, but I realized the, the overall card didn't have that much texture so I wanted to go in with some green markers and add a little texture to the grass just so it gives it a little something extra and I think like small details like that really help make the card. So I couldn't decide which sentiment to use because there's so much sky space and in this situation, I decided I'm just going to go with one sentiment and actually stamp out some of the smaller stars in the set. So I stamp out, I think, about five of five or six of them, obviously, um, and I color them up. And I'm actually just going to end up fussy cutting this and adding it to the background just to fill up that space. For me, like, I want a more full card. Some Like, I used to make cards where it was kind of empty and it was always missing something. So here I'm just adding the stars to fill up that card. Once I finish fussy cutting these stars, I'm using a uh, liquid pixie dust for the stars. And I think it really adds a sparkly effect. As you can see, I slow mode it. Um, so you can see the shine from just that liquid pixie dust. I think it's really, really pretty and it adds a great element to the card itself. So um, once everything's dry, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out that sentiment. I'm going to heat emboss it using white embossing powder and just to make sure that this sentiment pops. If I use black, you can see it, but I think that it might get lost. So I really wanted it just to um, stand out and stamping with the um, embossing ink. And then I'm going to add the white embossing powder and I'll heat set this. So, okay, for me, 
holiday cards, Halloween cards, like who do you really send that to? So I tend to stick with the sentiments that don't say happy Halloween. Um, I will just add a sentiment. This one in particular says you're wicked and I can use that anytime, even though it's kind of Halloween based. Like for me, I don't really send Halloween cards. It's a really fun holiday for me because I love dressing up, but card wise, it's kind of strange to send out Halloween cards to me. You guys might feel differently about it, but I like to do neutral sentiments where I can just send cards to people without being like, oh, this is a Halloween card. Uh, so once I decided where I wanted to place the stars and it fills up the sky, I'll go ahead and glue them down. But this more or less completes my card. And I think it turned out super cute. And of course, I can send this to anyone because it's not Halloween specific. It's just saying, hey, you're wicked. So thank you for joining me today. And I hope you enjoyed the card. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.